very good morning to our lecturer Sir Nusaidi Mahat and other panels of lecturers who is watching this video right now. We are Konstak Bumi Sian Bahat and we are going to present our final year project which is Cadangan Pembinaan Sebuah Pusat Komuniti Dua Tingkat yang terdiri daripada Dewan Pusat Aktiviti Remaja, Pusat Jagaan Orang Tua, Klinik dan Tadika serta satu unit laman kekangan, satu unit rumah sampah, satu unit Pondok Pengawal dan satu taman permainan di projek Perumahan Rakyat Muhibah Petaling 58200 Kuala Lumpur untuk tertuan Dewan Bandaraya Kuala Lumpur. My name is Duan Beji Anak Tony and I am the Managing Director for Constec Bumis dan Bahad and I'll be presenting our company's information. Constec Bumis dan Bahad is a company that is incorporated on 17th of April 2017 with a unit pendaftaran protector that is under the grade of G5 by Lembaga Pembangunan Industri Pembinaan Malaysia or also known as CIDB and it is certified ISO by Quality Management System. Constec Bumis dan Bahad commitment to its client is to deliver projects of the highest quality within the budget and meet if not exceed the client's expectations. These are our company the registration and the first one would be Suruhan Jaya Syarikat Malaysia, SSM, Lembaga Saudalam Negeri, LHDN, Construction Industry Development Board Malaysia, CIDB, Sijil Perayaan Kerja Kerajaan, SPKK, Bahagian Pembangunan Protector dan Usahawan, BPKU, Unit Pendaftaran Kontraktor Negeri Sarawak, BPK, Kementerian Keuangan Malaysia, KKM, Kumpulan Wang Simpanan Pekerja, KWSP, last but not least is Pertubuhan Keselamatan Sosial Malaysia or also known as PKSO. Our current vision of this company is to achieve target revenue by 2025 with the profit after tax or PAT of 10%. Meanwhile, the mission for Constec Bumi Sian Bahad is to be well known as a developer and consultant company with a great reputation not just in Sarawak but in Malaysia as well. These were the list of shareholders of the company which is consists of myself as a managing director which is consists of 40% and second will be the assistant managing director Siti Norbelina which consists of 30% the third shareholders will be the project manager Akmal Hakim with 15% and last but not least is the tender manager Fravelin Lindai which is also consists of 15% as well these are our budget for our company which is the capital of Constec Bumi Sian Bahad and the authorized capital is 1 million which is from Maybank, SME Bank and RBH Bank. Meanwhile, the paid up capital is also 1 million as well. Next will be our corporate structure and as you know, I am the director of Constec Bumi Sian Bahad and I will be assisted by the assistant director of Constec Bumi Sian Bahad which is Siti Nobelna Binti Benjamin. Quantity surveyor for this company is Alvina Kunai Anak Ningkan. Tender manager is Freblin Lindai Anak Buma. Financial manager is Salihin bin Abu Malik. And the project manager is Zakma Hakim bin Abdullah. Admin manager will be Pijoyster Anak Atut. And site manager of Constec Permission Bahad will be Rebecca Jane Anak Jema. We have a lot of completed projects and ongoing projects for the car for the few couple of years and up until today. And our first completed project will be the construction and completion of proposed grandstand and associated works at Mini Stadium Simunjan Samarahan Division, Sarawak and our client will be MSD Enterprise Nyan Bahad and the total value of the projects is 1,920,000 and it is completed in the year uh, 2020. The second project will be proposed replacement of plaster ceiling board of Sunset Ballroom Foyer at Damai Beach Resort which is very well known beach at Kuching and the client is Billing Matrix Nyan Bahad and the value is 62,540 ringgit and it is also completed on the year of 2020. Third 
Yes, will be Petronas LNG Train 9 projects, trenchings for cable, which is in the green field, and the general civil and concrete works in that field. And our client will be Naim Engineering Sian Bahad, and the total projects is 980,614 ringgit and it is completed in the year of 2018. Meanwhile for the ongoing project would be the first one is maintenance or improvement of drainage in SK Dato Muhammad Musa in Kota Semrahan and our client is Sarikat Senang Maju and the value of this project is 89,990 ringgit and the contract period is 7 months. Meanwhile, the second project of the ongoing project will be proposed construction and completion of staff quarters at Karabungan Farm in Miri. And the client will be Nusantaria Resource Nian Bahad. And the total value of this project will be 420,722 ringgit. And the contract period for this project is one year. Hi, my name is Ferdinina Anaruma. I'm a head of tendering department. I will present about a little bit about tender and elaborating more about summary of tender for project cadangan pembinaan sebuah pusat community dua tingkat yang terdiri daripada dewan, pusat aktiviti remaja, pusat jagaan orang tua, klinik tadika, serta satu unit laman kenangan, satu unit rumah sampah, satu unit penduduk pengawal, dan taman permainan di projek perumahan rakyat Muhibah di atas lot 38561 Batu 7 Jalan Pucung Mungkin Petaling 58200 Kuala Lumpur Untuk tetuan Dewan Bandar Raya Kuala Lumpur First of all, here short explanation process of tender 1. Incoming tender 2. Purchasing tender 3. Tender purchase and collection 4. Tender preparation 5. Tender compilation and lastly 6. Tender submission Summary of tender involved in tender preparation process Costage Bumi Seneran Berhad will grade 5 and limit the amount of the project above 5 billion ringgit Malaysia Summary of tender got 9 bills that need to be calculated the amount of the material, machineries or equipment 9 bills of quantity consist preliminaries, piling works, pusat community, pondok pengawal, laman kenangan, pusat pengumpulan sampah, mechanical and electrical service, external work, and provisional sum. For preliminaries and provisional sum, they provide lump sum method so it is easier for us to put the exactly amount Meanwhile, paling box, pusat community, pondok pengawal, laman kenangan, pusat pengumpulan sampah, mechanical and electrical service, and external work need to be calculated. <coughs> this is summary of tender. Bill 1, preliminaries 18,834,190. Bill 2, paling works 56,700. 2176 Bill 3 Pusat Community 60 million 700 3416 Bill 4 Pondok Pengawal 60 million 703416 Bill 5 Laman Kenangan 60 million 703416 Bill 6, Pusat Pengumpulan Sampah, 60,703,416. Bill 7, Mechanical and Electrical Services, 82,816,353. Bill 8, External Work, 27,178,400. And lastly, Bill 9, Provisional Sum. 69 million amount of tender for this project 497 million 344,823 as you can see here this is our site layout in the top of the site drawing is the proposed building and near the proposed building is the temporary building which is wash pit guardhouse store workers accommodation 
toilet, set office, canteen, and meeting room. The arrow shows the direction flow of the vehicle and machinery in the site. From the left side, the meeting room is in yellow, the toilet is in green, the canteen is in orange, the site office is in brown, the workers' accommodation is in the middle and in the color purple, the store is in the color blue, and wash pit is in the color light blue. Lastly, the guard house is in the color light peach. My name is Rebecca Jen Anak Jemeb and I'll be presenting on schedule for material, manpower, and machinery. And as we can see, for the schedule for the material, the highest point on the graph was on March 2022. It is because on March 2022, we are still in prog progress, in progress for the roofing and the material that was actively used on March was sand aggregate and cement. The material of the material that that is used on March 2022 was cement, sand and aggregate. It is used for the whole month of March 2022. And as we can see, the lowest point was May, which is no material use because on May 2021, we are still in progress of in progress of in process of planning, which is no material that are required. Uh, next is for the schedule of manpower. As we can see, the highest number of manpower required was on September 2021 which is 256 manpowers or labors that are required on the construction site. It is because there are lots of uh, manpower needed to transport the material and for the site clearance on the on the construction sites therefore we also need manpower to to assemble some of the form work because during the during september there are process of for process for constructor constructing grim ground beam and slab and also stump Lastly, as we can see on the schedule for the machinery, the highest point was on July. It is because uh, we are still in process to for the earthwork, the clearance with and transporting the the material on the site. So we need a lot of machinery during that month, and. As we can see on the graph, from November until April, we we did not use any machinery because the earthwork the earthwork was completely done, be, completely done, and we did not use any machinery for from November and November 2022 until April 2023. For our company site organization was on top of the organization was our project manager Akmal Hakim bin Abdullah. He is responsible for developing details project plans and ensuring resources availability and allocation and also delivering every project on time within budget and scope. Next uh, is our site manager, which is Rebecca Jane Anak Jemeb. She will be responsible of preparing site prior uh, to the commencement of construction work, including setting out the site and organizing activities. Uh, next was our site engineer, which is Wan Hassan bin Jasman. He will oversee all engineering process in the construction projects and provide subject matter expertise, expertise as per requirement and perform a regular tests on procedure to ensure compliance 
to all regulations and evaluate all designs and drawings before implementation. Uh, our assistant site engineer is Rachel Marie Anna David. She is responsible to complete all tasks assigned by senior site engineer uh, and safely operating equipment and working alongside other engineers in planning, design, development and evaluation, evaluation stage of projects. Next was our site surveyor. Our site surveyor is Stephen Sulong Anak Sanggai. He is responsible for developing land survey reports and performing calculations of measurements and evaluations. For the site, for the assistant site surveyor, Baidurah Binti Abdul Malik is responsible to perform routine tasks to assist surveyors by transporting, assembling, maintaining, and laying out pros prospecting and surveying equipment. She also need to collect, she also responsible on collecting and labeling the samples. Next was our site safety supervisor. Our site safety supervisor is Balkis Bayinah Binti Hakim. And she is responsible for monitoring and controlling of health and safety compliance and related rules and regulation in the organization. Uh, she is also uh, responsible on promote safety awareness among the employees in the workplace and advise the management on association laws and regulations. Next was our site supervisor, which is uh, Muhammad Fadil bin Rahman. Uh, site supervisor is responsible on monitoring the progress of construction project and ensure compliance with construction safety regulations. Uh, site supervisor will supervise construction workers and subcontractors and also educate construction workers on site, site safety practice and evaluate employee performance. Last but not least was our safety guard, which is uh, Jokerson Jambu. He will he is responsible to secure premises and personnel by patrolling property, which is monitoring surveillance equipment by inspecting buildings, equipment and access, access points which is permitting entry. He also obtains help by sounding alarms. He prevents losses and damages by reporting irregularities which is informing violators by, of policy and procedure with, with Restraining the trespassers. Assalamualaikum to society and fellow lecturers. My name is Akmal Hakim, and today I will talking about the reason for our extension of time. Force Measure Clause forty three point one B JKR two zero three A COVID Movement Control Order, or mostly known now as MCO. COVID-19 has been the cause of many construction projects to become delayed and put on a halt as the leaders of the country orders the whole nation to quarantine and stay at home for a certain period of time. This includes everyone including the construction workers and everyone involved in the project. Dr. Noor Hisham, the Director General of Health, stated the cause of the spread of the virus is the transmission among individuals in cramped areas in crowded living condition caused poor hygiene and environment. That's all for me. Thank you. Register and today I will like to talk about the project planning. For the as what you can see from the gun chart, the preliminary work is takes 523 days which is start on 3rd of 
June 2021 and finish at the 3rd of June 2023. The third possession takes the duration of 23 days which is started on 3rd of June 2021 until 5th of June 2021. Next is the temporary building. It takes two days. It started on 6th July 2021 until 7th June 2021. Next, we move on to the piling work. For the piling work, it takes 30 days, which is started on 24th of the July 2021 until 3rd of September 2021. For the building work, it takes 415 days, which is started on 3rd of September 2021 and finished on 6th April 2023. For the work below the floor level, it takes 63 days, which started on 3rd of September 2021 and finished on 30th of 11 2021. Next, we have from we have for the framework, it takes 43 days, which is started on 1st of December 2021 and finish on 28th January 2022. Next, we move to the roof work. For the roof, it takes the duration of 48 days, which is started on 29th of January 2022 and finish on 5th April 2022. Next, we have the internal work, internal wall, which takes the duration of 64 days which is started on 6 April 2022 and finished on 4th of July 2022. Next we move to the door which is take 9 days, window 10 days and a floor finish it takes 29 days, uh, the ceiling finish it takes 34 days, plumbing system 14 days. <coughs> Next, we move to the MNE. It takes 31 days, which is started on 21st of April 2023 and finish on the 20 April 2023. And our end of the project is ended on 3rd of June 2023. Next, I would like to talk about our financial S-curve and the physical S-curve. For the financial S-curve, as what as we can see, it is uh, lower from the start at the project and higher at the end of the project. The data is generated from the cumulative cash flow. For the physical S-curve, at the beginning of the project, it is lower and at the end of the project, it is the highest. Uh, the data from this physical S curve is from the duration working days for each month. Moving on to the safety and health activity report. In this report, it is done based on the activity that have been held on the construction site during the construction period. This report was made by our engineers and employees. Based on the report, they have stated a few activities that have been held there. There are toolbox meeting, inspection, um, construction netting, and fogging. Toolbox meeting is one of the most important activities on site, which it is carried out to verify that workers are in compliance with safety and training standards. It is also to educate the workers on the risks that may occur during working hours on the construction site. Apart from that, the inspection activities was needed to guarantee a safe working environment and site safety check was performed. The main goals of this inspection are to detect hazards on the construction sites and to reduce the risk of safety health and the environment. This activity was often carried out by our safe site safety officer and special personnel from the safety and health organization. 
As for the construction netting, which also known as a safety net, it is a type of net that has been that has been put around the structure to protect the people and employees from injury when they fall from a great heights by reducing the distance of the fall. Lastly, fogging was not actually a required task at the construction site, but it was preferable to do so in order to keep the employees safe from the dengue virus, which commonly known in Malaysia right now. And it was done when there are mosquito annoyance problem or a disease outbreak. Hi and Assalamualaikum to Sir Saidi. My name is Salihin bin Abu Malik from ap 1166A. I will talk more about our company which is Constack Bumi Sendiran Berhad on Site Safety Implementation Plan. Alright, the organization purpose, we are committed to protecting the safety and health of our employees, contractors and the communities in which we operate. This health and safety management plan aims to implement the policies and approach outlined in the environmental management system. The next slide is the policies and commitment of our company side on safety implementation. Policy and commitment as part of the preparation of the safety statement required by Section 20 of the Safety, Health and Welfare at Work Act 2005, our company is to committed to leadership and continuous improvement in environmental health and safety practices for the benefits of employees, contractors and communities. Our company's policies are providing a safe and healthy work environment. Next is proactive from occupational hazards. The third one is the third one is eradicating discrimination in workplace. Furthermore, is to prevent tardiness among co-workers. Beside that is complying with applicable laws, regulation, policies and standards. Next is enforce disciplinary action with complete access to rule and regulation of workplace. The next policy is to consider concern and complaint of employees and clients, follow through with conserving natural resources and energy, and last but not least is to integrate the environmental health and safety goals and objectives. We move to the third slide is about the goals of our company sites health and safety implementation plan. The goals are such as the first one, which is the important one, is an incident-free. We don't want any incident in at site. The second one is to reducing risk and hazards at site. And the third one is to reduce financial losses and liabilities to this project. And the last one is to meet stakeholders, customer and society expectation. As you know, my name is Twain and I am the director of Constack Bumi Sian Bahad and our project has been completed for 50% up until today and here are the progress photographs in the construction site. As you can see in diagram 1, we have successfully installed the steel roofing truss and because of that we are enabled to install the roof insulation and followed by the metal roof sheet installation as well. And because of this, uh, the basic structure has already appeared on the external part of a building for the roof part. Furthermore, as you can see on the game 4, we have installed the metal roof ridge after the metal roofing sheet installation and last but not least, we have also successfully installed the rainwater goods which is the gutter on the end of the roof.